I suppose it's rather um, ironic in some way that my grandfather was involved in the First World War and my father in the Second World War was involved in military intelligence in Ireland. He used to sum it up that when they caught British airmen or sailors in Ireland, they sent them back home and when they caught the Germans, they sent them to an internment camp. So the, the, the involvement of the family in war at different times uh, maybe runs counter to the way I feel about war at this stage. But I think the reasons for war have changed since my grandfather signed up for, for the Royal Dublin Fusiliers in the First World War. The wars that we have today do not benefit the people that war is supposed to be waged on behalf of. Uh, it would be easy to say in a glib way, but there's a truth in it. Iraq is a worse off place today than it was under Saddam Hussein. That doesn't clear him of anything. He was a brutal dictator. Uh, he used gas against Kurds. He used torture against his own citizens. He waged wars against his neighbours, including Iran, for his own megalomaniac reasons. But the war against Saddam Hussein was not waged to remove an evil presence in the world. It was he didn't suit the plans of Western leaders today. That would be enough justification to wage war today against Saudi Arabia, where there's an unelected head of state with a massive army that is being built up and that foments and educates and finances terrorism throughout the world. Saudi Arabia provides the banking system and the training system and the material for the Islamic State and did so for the 9-11 bombers. Nobody would dare touch Saudi Arabia. Why do we go to war? Why do we wage war? And why do we get people involved in war and to believe that war is a good cause? When people were going to war at the beginning of the First World War, at the end of 1914, some of the rallying cries were, your king needs you. I'm sure in Germany there were, the Kaiser needs you. Even in Russia, the Tsar needs you. There was a sense of loyalty to the structures of society and they benefited us, uh, almost in a Downton Abbey type of way. If the king is all right, the subjects are going to be all right. If the Lord of the Manor is okay, the people who work for him are going to be safe and secure in their jobs, and it's in all our interests. But there was a different understanding then of, of how we were bound together in terms of society. What binds us together as a society today, I think, is national identity which did not exist be in Europe to the same way that it does today. Nobody thought of a Czech state or a Polish state or a Serbian state. It's interesting that the trigger for the First World War is an excuse based on Serbian nationalism. And I, I personally feel that nationalism is always a perversion. It doesn't identify economic needs, it doesn't identify social needs, it doesn't identify cultural needs. Why should I feel culturally less uh, identified with the culture of Germany and Mozart and Bach and Beethoven uh, than with the composers in the English-speaking world? Uh, nationalism uh, in some way erodes our shared humanity, our shared European culture, um, our shared economic needs. We need to feed our children, we need to clothe them, we need to house them, we need to look after their health system. If anything, the Second World War only became a war for looking after our needs when William Temple and people like that eventually were able to browbeat Churchill into there must be a better deal for those who return. It's interesting that the Conservative Party concedes the National Health Service at the end of the Second World War, and it's now the Conservative Party that's eliminating it because money is needed for more wars and for the war coffers. The only people who benefit from war in the long run, nobody has been liberated in Iraq, nobody is being liberated in Syria, nobody was liberated in Egypt. Yes, with hindsight we know that the people in the camps in Auschwitz and Belsen were liberated, but that was not the reason for the, for the Second World War. The reason was that 
Hitler had too many concessions made to him. He'd got Sudetenland, he had got Czechoslovakia, he'd got Austria. He wasn't going to get Poland. There's a post hoc justification which is very moral uh, and very compelling for the Second World War. But that's a post hoc justification. And the people who collaborated with Hitler and made the concessions to him all along were the Daily Mail and the Daily Express and the Daily Telegraph and the Times. Not the Jarrow Marchers. Uh, they weren't being promised any liberation in 1939, three years after the Jarrow March. Um, if we start saying that nationalism is an ideology that is evil, we then provide an explanation for what Hitler did, for what Stalin did, and we might be able to identify some of the things that we're getting wrong at the moment in Western Europe as well. Uh, nationalism is the alternative to the European project. If Britain pulls out of the European Union, the people who are marching every night and every week in the streets of Dresden calling for German isolation will have another feather in their cap. The Front National in France who want to blame Jews and Muslims for all the problems in France will have another feather in their cap. I think at the moment we're playing into the hands of the ultranationalists. And where does nationalism end? I was worried that the Scottish referendum was eventually going to mean that we would have an England that was isolated from Scotland and Wales and Ireland, uh, where the natural majority might be the Tories in a coalition with UKIP. Uh, nationalism creates nationalisms and creates extremes and creates isolationism. Good grief, could you imagine a Staffordshire nationalism with the, uh, with the symbol of the Staffordshire Bulldog? What would that say to the rest of England? And we can joke about it here this morning, but there are people who are talking about a Cornish nationalism and a Yorkshire nationalism. And they've found their symbolisms. And they, they, they will have their symbolism with the funeral of a dead king dug up in a car park in Leicester. Um, nationalism is the ideology of small minds. Great minds realize the needs of others.